So I'm waiting. Hey. I can hear you. So you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, can they um shout happy GIS day? Okay, I think I can hear some people. <laughs> So um, let me let me start. Just for that, I can hear me, so I can start. Start. Hello, Chidi. Yes, start. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So uh, this presentation is for the celebration of is for the celebration of GIS Day, and then we appreciate uh, your efforts for reaching out to us. That was what um, uh, prompted um, we having GIS Day with uh, your school, and then um, we are happy that we have two or three schools gathering. So my name is Olumide. And I'm the research and development specialist, where, where I have my colleague also, Inyoluwa Ujumu, the technical analyst. He will be demonstrating for us after my presentation. So I will also have um, Sanity Elijah, our technical sales. So let me just go straight to this slide. So we are samples, um, and um, I know the students must have heard about GIS. I checked the textbook, the essential textbook, the essential geography, who is winner, and I saw GIS there. So I know that you guys have been doing GIS, but it might just be that you are doing theory, and um, they've not been exposed to the, um, the technical aspect of it. So that's why we are having this. So we are the geospatial solution firm for West Africa, and then um, particularly um, in Nigeria also. So we are the distributor of SG, distributor of BNV. So the SG is just the uh, is the GIS uh, software. It's the biggest in the world. So we'll be making use of it for the um, demonstration. What's GIS? What's GISD? Since it's the first time of having a GISD, so I'll let them know. Then introducing maps, what does map mean? So I'll introduce that to them and show them the uh, aspects of um, geography, the branches in geography. So what is GIS? Um, can any student tell me uh, what is GIS? Can we have anybody to tell us what is GIS? Can you hear me? Hello? I hear you. I yes, do you have any student? Do you have any student that can tell us what GIS means? Do you have any? Yeah, so 
Okay, can you speak please? So what is GIS? I can't hear you. Are they shy? Is anybody speaking? You tell me your name, uh, your school, and what is GIS? I'm waiting. We don't have anybody. Okay, let me continue. Okay, then uh, what's, what's your name? What's your school? And what is the guys? Hello, good afternoon. Her name is Ayomi. 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 Uh, good afternoon. Happy GIS Day. Ayomi, um, what is GIS? I can hear you. Okay, I think we need to move on. GIS uh, is, is Geographic Information System, the acronym GIS, Geographic Information System. So that's uh, basically the, the acronym means Geographic Information System. So with data, when you collect data, that's when you can have an information to, to be able to perform uh, analysis. So uh, what is GISD? I know this is your first time of having a GISD. And um, uh, hopefully, we are hoping that by next day, we also have another GISD. And continuously, the schools will have um, GISD. So actually, the term was uh, from Roger Tom Lacey in 1962. So it's celebrated worldwide. So it's not only in Nigeria. So as we are celebrating it now, it's been celebrated in other parts of the world. So it's celebrated every third Wednesday of November. That's the GIS Day itself. But we can also call it GIS Week, like we're having it on Thursday. So we are celebrating our own GIS Day on Thursday, which is the third Thursday of November. So um let me just move to the uh, introduction to maps. I know um, maps is not new to you. I know it's not new to the students. So I just wanted to see um, some other areas that you might not be exposed to. I know um, a lot of you are using paper map, and um, but there's what we call digital map too, that you can view or you can edit or create on your computer. You can also view that on your mobile, like your phone. So um, I want you students to know that it's not just about map, like paper map, but we also have what we call digital map, which I'll be um, showing you a little bit of that. So we have um, branches of geography. I know that um you guys have done geography you've done a lot about um, geography but you can actually uh, split the geography area into physical and human so this will help you students to be able to know uh, because you can use your gis for different areas of geography it will help you to be able to know uh, which interest uh, you students have as a study um, some of you might be studying geography in university. I don't know why some of you might not want to, but uh, I just wanted to have an idea of how it is and how it can be applied. Even if you go into um, other uh, courses that is not even geography, you can also use GIS. So that's what I'm trying to um, explain for you to 
understand. So even if you are studying geography or you are going for another course, you can actually apply um, GIS, which is the Geographic Information System. So I listed um, some physical uh, geography area here. The biogeography, which is about plant and animal, climatology, climate. Um, the climatology, I know um, most of you must have done um, about rainfall, or about climate, climate change. I know that's in your textbook. I've seen it in your textbook. And I know these are areas that some of you like. Geomorphology for landforms. I know some of you, um, all of you did the plains. You did play two valleys and all that. Then hydrology for water. Um, I know um, your teachers must have mentioned about rivers in uh, Africa or rivers in Nigeria, River Niger, River Benue. So this this is another area that some of you, I know that some of you might be interested in. Pedology is for soil, study of soils. So uh, going to uh, the human, the human um, geography, the physical is just um, uh, basically the natural that you can see. Why the human is um, we um, being involved in this um, aspect of um, geography? So, uh, like I see, see on my screen, we have the cultural, we have the economic, the health, the political, transport, tourism, different areas in the human uh, geography. So, I would just um, like to show you. Um, guys, about imagery way back, world imagery way back. So you guys are currently in uh, a boundary school, right? Can you hear me? Okay. So, yeah. So I will show you something now. So basically, what I want to show is that um, the word image you back to compare your school to see how your school looks like like five years ago and now it is at the moment. So um, give me a minute, please. I'm Chidi. Uh, how many students do we have on ground? How many are you? How many? 25, I think. Yeah. 25. Up to 25, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Come on up. That's, that's nice. So we have um, Okela Secondary School, right? Actually, 52. 52. Oh, that's that's yes. fine. That's fine. So we have we have um, how many schools again in attendance? Okela Grammar School and um, Apollary College, two schools. Okay. So we don't have hope and glory. No, we don't. So Abolari. So I want to show you how your school is as of now, and then how it looks like um some uh, years ago. So this is a um, time time interval. This will make you to see. You know what uh, geography does is that we say geography is study of X, 
<laughs> so when we say it, so we want to see the actual place, as in the space, the place we are talking about, let's say we are talking about Abolari, Abolari School. Then we also actually want to see uh, what has changed. Maybe um, we are in um, 2022, how does it look like in 2017? So that's what I will be showing you now. As the name implies, As the name implies, way back, meaning that we are comparing um, different years of how it was before and how it is now, depending on how many years we want to um, compare. So this is uh, Abolani College. You can see my screen, right? Yeah. This, this is a building in your school, right? Yes. Okay, that's good. So this is the word you make you back. So I will, I will type the address of your school. So it will bring your school out for me. So while I'm uh, waiting for my internet to, to zoom the okay. Do we have two Abadani College? Do we have what? Can I hear you? Two Abadani College. No, yeah, just one Abadani College. Just one Abadani College. The one you should check is the one on top, not the one below. The one on top, that's the Abadani College. Okay. So it's, it's far yeah. away from the Premier Center. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. 
So why waiting for that? Let me just uh, to the next um, demonstration. Which is um, the base map. So I know that um, um, most of you have been doing a lot of drawings in your books. And then um, basically, uh, none of you have handled a laptop to see how digital map is. So I'll just show you um, the digital map. We have what we call the ArcGIS Online. So I just want to show you how different maps look like, different base map. So I know that um, you must have done exercise like draw the map of Nigeria, showing the states in Nigeria, or draw the map of Ocean State, showing the uh, local government in Ocean State, or maybe draw the map of Africa, showing the uh, countries in Africa. I know you've done that on your uh, paper, maybe an assignment, or you are drawing in your notes. But we have what we call the online, which you guys have not been exposed to. But I just wanted to show you how it looks like. So you can see here we have a uh, base map. So uh, now in, in your textbook, we have different areas. We have the population, we have the water or climate, different areas depending on um, which topic the teacher is teaching you at that moment. So on base map, it will show you the exact uh, future that you are working on. You can see here we have streets. So for you guys that are doing something on transport. So you can make use of these streets. You can see we have streets. So I'll, I'll click on that. You see how it will display now. So it's coming up.
this this is the road um, from you can see from Lagos to Ibadan or your state, uh, Ogomo Shore, then Ilori, then uh, Okila should be around here. So this is for road. This is this map for road. We can also there are several ones. We have the imagery topography, the uh, streets, the oceans. We have the colored pencil map. So we have different ones, the human geography, depending on what we want to work with. You can see the chartered, uh, the chartered and territory map. That will show you basically how the um, countries or how the state in Nigeria is. Um, okay, you can see it. This one is a bit uh, different from the former. You can see the shape. You can see that this is Nigeria and this is a Benin Republic, Togo, Ghana. Which country is this? I want to uh, know if you are conversant with the places. Which country is this? This one in blue. Anyone? Oh, that is already swelling. So the answer is there. So don't worry, it is playing already. So you can see Cameroon. Like, like you've been taught in class, you can see that. So this is just to show the territory. Yeah, let me just show you uh, one more. Let me show you. Okay. Um, have you guys done anything on um, this uh, topo, topo map? The one I used to use for the exam. Can you? Have you guys worked on the topo map that I use for your exam? For why exam? This big, this big paper like this that you place in front that is very big. Just few of them have done it. Just few. Yes, test three basically. Okay, so this is like an example of that. This is an example of that in the digital form. So you see the um, the land forms the height. You can you can see this shape. You can see this uh, Ajakuta here in Kogi State. This is five hundred and ninety nine meters, meaning that is higher than. Um, these places that are surrounding, you know, that's how your uh, topo map look like. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. Hello. Yes, you can see six five three meters. You can see five five six. So this is basically how our topo map looks like. Depending on the interval, some can be fifty, some can be hundred interval. So you calculate till you reach uh, the highest point. So, aside having a simple uh, sheet like a paper, the digital uh, platform, which is the ArcGIS, provides this. You can see everything here. Um, let's zoom to uh, Ocean State. Let's see what we have there. So, um, okay, I'm, I'm trying to look for. So basically, eh, on this map, 
As you have seen number, Fabi. Hello, yes. numbers indicate height of point. Hmm? Do you understand? So if you say number 51,000, and then number 49,000, which one is higher? If, no, the 50,000 is higher. It's measured using sea level. Hmm? So this, this is topo yes. map. Those things, they are called spot height. Yes. Hmm? Those numbers, yes, they are exactly. called spot height. Yes. You can see 693. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. If we go towards the uh, river path, the meters will be less. Yeah. That's how it is on top of map. And I know the student that have, have seen this that has been um, explained. For those that have still studied geography, in year one, they will still be taught. For example, my year one, I was taught. My year one, I was taught. Um, we, we call it... Uh, um, intro to maps, just like we have um, the title of our presentation today as an introduction to maps. So um, let me, you can see 380, 430. Maybe uh, this 380 is going towards the lower part. You know, the higher it goes, the, uh, the higher the ground. Okay, this, this, uh, this uh, river, Okay. Okay, this is a lake here. So I want to see the meters around here. Are the students following? Do you understand what I'm explaining? Hello. Hi. Are you can hear me? Are you still following? Are you following? Yes. Hello? They are following. Yes, they are following. Yes. So this is a lake. This is a water body here. Lake Kindly. You can see that we have three, six, three meters here. At the out parts, meaning that if you come towards this uh, lake Kanji, then you get lesser, it gets lesser. When you move out, it gets higher. So that's the uh, way um, it is explaining your topo map. So I just wanted to have this understanding. So if you guys go to your um, have your work, your major work, so you can understand how it works. So you can see the digital view of it, different rivers coming um, together. So let me just also show you. Uh, okay, let me let me explain to the northern part. You you will see I uh, I you see heights that are higher than the our southern parts. You can see six one three six one three meters. I don't know uh, as your uh, uh, teacher told you about Joe's have um, the highest place in Nigeria. You can see one seven five four meters Just in, in Just. Yes, you can see one thousand seven hundred fifty four meters. So, and also, yeah, like it is in your textbook too. The uh, part of uh, Taraba, this uh, part of the map, Taraba towards the Cameroon border, we have high regions. So you can see 1681 meters here. 1681 meters. Okay. See 2412. So towards 
um, these Tam Buddha of Nigeria, they have eyebrows. So I know, I know you guys did on a play to uh, uh, play. I know you guys must have done that to play. So um, you guys must have talked about places in Nigeria with high meters above sea level. Uh, so let me just uh, also mention. Yes. You asking a question? Um, they don't know so much places in Nigeria. Let me be honest with you. Okay, I I I, I thought um in the geography textbook we used to mention examples. They would tell us that okay, we have high grounds. They will now mention uh we have in Taraba, we have in Jos. I thought you give those examples to them too. But at least they know Ocean States. Even in the places in Nigeria. Of course. I have this you know Ocean States. Yeah, most majority of them know Ocean States. Some of them were okay. they are born here actually, so they have not really known other places. So so we should say like 90 percent going in ocean states <laughs> okay six one five meters this is around okay uh let me let me let me just see let me see your sugar okay there's a place here for 30 meters. You can see that there's a difference between the uh, high ground that we are finding in Jaws, that we can find in Taraba, and the Northern region. You can see, like you must have explained to them that uh, most places as you go up north, they are higher in meters. And when you come down south, from Ocean State, then down to Lagos, or some of them that have been to Lagos, you see, you can even see 70 meters. It will go as low as 70 meters or even 30 meters in uh, Lagos. So um, that is for. I'm coming, please. Yes. So I'm um, typing your school out. I want to go straight. Okay, Okela or Shun. Shun states. I want to be sure. Oh. Okay. Okay, let me just type this go out. Okay. So I want to save this so that um, the next person I speak in, the technical analyst can use it to explain 
to you guys. So let me just call it okay. La. Okay. Um, so I'll be adding over to the next person that will speak so that you can show you some um, demonstration. I'm um, using your school as an example. So, okay, let, uh, okay, I didn't round up this one. So let me just round up this. I was trying to explain um, before. So uh, basically, what I want to explain for this is that um, you guys can see February, um, you can see November, either, November 2nd, 2022. So you can see me on October 12th. So this will give you different uh, dates. This is still 2022. So you can actually scroll down and see um, 2021. You can see five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. And you can also compare. So let me zoom a bit. Okay, let me let me find the, the popular place to explain this. So I'll I'll round up. Uh, I'm just um, looking for an example to use in a few states. Let me see. Let me use this. Okay. Uh, this is in a few states too. Some of you might have been here. Oh. Uh, I won't be able to use this one. Let me use another one. So you understand what I'm trying to explain. So in about five minutes, I should be done. I just want to explain to you this. Okay, let me uh, wait for it. Okay, uh, I don't know maybe you heard about this um along with that uh towards Shibu. So I just want to compare places. Okay. Um, is all around that popular today? Is it a popular place to the students? What did you say? Is all around that a popular place to the students? 
Oloronda. Ah. Okay. okay. No, let, no, let me no, just no. see it. Let me use the surrounding places just, in the okay, so that we don't have any. Uh, so that we should this is the okay, Most of them we are born in the okay, so okay, They grow up in the okay, Okay. 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 So your school is around here actually. Is around here. We will compare twenty twenty two, July twenty first. We will now compare twenty fourteen, February twenty eighth. So so, this is your school, if I'm not mistaken. So, this, this should be a volunteer school. So I'm waiting for it to load. Okay, the... Okay, the image I have there, um, it has not been, what I have is just for August, it has not been updated. So I won't be able to use your school to, to make this explanation. So as soon as we updated, I think, uh, maybe because the remote place, but very soon to be updated. Okay, so that's why I cannot. So I, I guess you understand um, the reason behind that. That's why I can't use your school. So I will just use another place. All right. Yeah, can give me uh, a comparison. Okay, this is a particular junction at the uh, Okila. So, so uh, what is happening is that okay, let's not be updated to be able to compare. So, I'll just go for a very popular place so that I can round up this. A popular place is just to demonstrate. I can see you so you good then is the capital. So I know I know um I'm still friends might not uh been to Shibu. But so let me just use Shibu to um demonstrate this. Loading. <laughs> so it's loading. Okay, I cannot find. Uh, okay, let me wait for it. Okay. So I'll just show you this and I'll, I'll be done with my. Uh, um explanation so so we're looking to compare you can see this side that is for 2022 and this side is for 2014 so 2022 uh 
Um, let me wait for you to load. Okay. Um, the network is not so strong. So um, let me let me hand over to the uh, next person. So basically, it's just to compare. You can see my 2022, and you can see 2014 February 20. Uh, 20. So it's just to compare the different years. And, and I, I could have used this to slide. So to the right is 2014, to the left is 2022. So that's the explanation I want to make. Okay. Um, Thank you guys. Uh, thank I don't you. know if I share your video. It's nice. Guys. Hold on, please. Um, can you take the photograph of the uh, student? Um, <laughs> Um, TV guy, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, you can, you can take the picture of the student. Um, we can take it from two views. Um, from the direction in which they are looking at the projector, from front and from the back. Take, you can take from different views, different angle. I mean, have you done that? Hello, students. Hello, guys. Hey. Happy GIS Day. Happy GIS. Thank you. So I'm sure it was interesting and you learned from it. So which could we have by the left, by my left? And the school on, uh, is that pink or red color? Which school is that? Okay, la grammar school. Okay, la grammar school. So we have uh, Abolani by the right on blue. Yes. yes. By the <laughs> By his right, Abolari by, by his left. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, happy Jai's Day once again. Okay. So, you've taken the pictures, right? Yes, yes, I have. So, I'm handing over to the next person. 
So it will give you a demonstration. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys. All right, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you see me? Good afternoon. How are you guys doing? All right, so my name is Inyoluwa Ojumu. <laughs> Inyoluwa Ojumu is my name, and I work with Sambo's Geospatial Nigeria Limited. I'm really happy to be here to share my knowledge with you on GIS. Uh, another reason why I'm happy to be here is, is that uh, I'm happy because you guys are exposed to what GI is from this your age. I understand that um, GIS has been incorporated into your syllabus. Am I right? Hello. I said GIS has been integrated into your uh, geography syllabus. Am I right? Yes. All right. Okay. So thank you. So many of us are familiar with uh, your Google Map. If you want to go from one place to another, those of us using Android phone, you can uh, go to Google Map and say, I want to move from my school to another place. How do I get there? The basis of what you are seeing is, the background of what you are seeing there is uh, GIS. It is Geographic Information System. You understand? Some of us, our parents help us to order things from, uh, they help us to order things online from Jumia, from Punga. How do those people locate us? How do they know our addresses? How do they come and give us all those things? The basis of uh, the technology behind all that is uh, GIS. So I'm very, very happy and excited to be able to share my knowledge with you. And I hope you are excited also. I'll start by saying that not all of us will be a doctor. Not all of us will be an engineer. Not all of us are going to be teachers. Uh, not every one of us is going to be uh, a lawyer and so on. You understand? So. Uh, there are some of us, because of this exposure, that we are going to, uh, on the long run, get into GIS, and I'm sure that that will that will that will happen. Okay, so GIS, like my colleague said, is the technology that helps us to collect geographic data. It helps us to analyze geographic data. It helps us to uh, integrate and do a little bit of uh, real-time, you can also do real-time visualization, you understand? So, but the difference between uh, the data that GIS use and any type of data that any other thing we use is the fact that G uh, GIS makes use of special data sets. Special data sets. Everybody say special data sets. Special data sets. Special data sets. So, or you can call it, you can call it, yeah, you can call it geographic data sets. You can call it special data sets. You can call it locational data. So, these data sets are data sets that have uh, the longitude, the latitude, or sometimes you can. It can have the elevation attributes. You understand? I know that you are you have been exposed to longitude and latitude in your geography, in your fundamentals. You understand? So those attributes, the longitude, the latitude, those are what GIS makes use of. So without the locational attributes of data sets, we don't have uh, GIS. I hope you understand. So the thing that separates GIS from every 
other kind of uh, prevention of field is the fact that we make use of spatial or locational or geographic data sets. Am I clear? <laughs> Can you hear me, please? Okay, so what I'm saying is that the one of the major things that separates GIS from every other field is the uh, is that locational attribute. That is, uh, your, loc your locational data or your spatial data or your uh, your geographic data set. They are data set that have the longitude the latitude, or sometimes they have uh, the elevation data set. Remember that in your geography, they, they told us that Nigeria uh, exists from uh, longitude, is it three degrees or to, is it eight, uh, something like that. So those are the locational attributes that we are talking about. Do you understand? All right, so my colleague has told you about GIS. For us to be able to perform GIS operations, we one of the uh, we need to understand components of GIS. So let let me share something with you so that you can have better understanding about it. So can you guys see my screen? Can you see my screen, please? All right. So I'll explain. All right. So I'll explain what GIS is to you. You understand? I'll explain what GIS is. Uh, I explained that it's a system that helps us to collect, to analyze, to manipulate uh, geographic data sets. You understand? So, but one thing is very, very important for you to know that GIS has five different basic components. And the first one is your software. So my colleague the other time displayed uh, ArcGIS online with you, right? So ArcGIS is uh, one of the GIS software, and it is the, is the most robust GIS software that we have. So software, is the first component of GIS. Another component is the hardware. Hardware is an example of hardware is your computer, your laptop or your desktop computer. You understand? So apart from the software and the hardware component, we have the data. So don't forget that when we talk about GIS, we are talking about spatial data sets. You understand? So although we can also integrate data set that are not special with our GIS, you understand? So we have the data component of GIS. The fourth one is the people component of GIS. Myself, uh, you, for some people that are going to be uh, GIS experts in the coming years, so we are the people. So there's no GIS without people, you understand? And the last component is the workflow or the method. So there are some capabilities that GIS can do for you. We talked about the first one is the data collection. You can use GIS to collect data sets. So take for instance, the government wants to uh, they want they want to be they want to optimize our primary health center in, in Oshun State now. They are finding places where they can build more primary health center. So it is required that the government should do a kind of data collection for them to know existing ones that we have on the ground, for them to be able to analyze and know where and where not to do the new ones, so that it won't be like some people are underserved and some people are overserved. So data collection, we can use GIS to collect data sets. We can use GIS for mapping. I know that one thing that you, uh, 
that, that you guys know more about GIS is mapping, mapping, mapping. But GIS is not all about mapping. You can use GIS for mapping. You can use GIS for spatial analysis. You can use GIS for real-time visualization. In case, let me give you an example for this real-time visualization. Assuming there is an ongoing uh, robbery, say in uh, Oshobu. So if somebody with GIS, you can report that incident, and from the uh, from those organizations that are in charge of security, security organization or prastata, they can be able to see that information that is being reported live, and they can be able to know where that occurrence is happen, happening, and they can send probably maybe police or any other uh, agencies that, that are supposed to be on, on, on the ground. You understand? So you can also use GIS for 3D visualization for those people that are going to be surveyors, those people that are going to go into engineering. Uh, you can use GIS for 3D visualization and 3D analysis. You can use GIS for also field mapping. Okay. So that is that about. So like I was saying that GIS can be used for for mapping, which is uh, that one that I know that everybody is familiar with. So, and I also explained to you that one of the foremost GIS uh, software or the most robust software that we have is the GIS, uh, is the ArcGIS, in which our organization we use and we sell to we sell to our uh, customers. All right. So, with the ArcGIS is divided into different uh, different uh, models. We have the ArcGIS pool. We have the online. My colleague displayed showed you uh, a little bit about the online the other time. So, GIS, the ArcGIS is divided into that. The ArcGIS uh, desktop, the online, and the enterprise. So, for today, I will be showing you one interesting part that I, I know that you guys will love, and that is uh, I will show you a component. Let me log into my ArcGIS online. Okay, so this is my ArcGIS online. This is my ArcGIS online. And this is the portal. This is the portal for ArcGIS. This is my organization, Samples to Special Limited. You understand? So you can see we have the home tab gallery map where you can see different map seen for 3D visualization content where you can manage your uh, contents on the portal. You understand? So, but on the ArcGIS online, we have different applications on our ArcGIS online. And one of the applications that I'll be talking about is the story maps. Everybody say ArcGIS story maps. Say story maps. Story, story maps, map. yeah. Yeah, so the ArcGIS story map I'll be talking about, this is it here. We have different applications on the ArcGIS. So we're talking about the ArcGIS story map here today. So let me open the story map for you. But before we do anything on story map, I would like to give you a little gist about story maps. You understand? So story map is like, uh, is one of the GIS application embedded in the hard GIS online that enables uh, users to create stories, uh, combine narrative, uh, combine media content, and sometimes even combine web uh, maps. So I know you are familiar with your paper maps. You understand you are familiar with this your topography sheet that you only use for your work. But I want you to know that apart from that uh, sheet that you are seeing, that you are seeing, which is a, a type of static map, what we are doing here is like uh, we call it web map. It's not static. You understand? It's not a static map. It's not something like a paper map. It is dynamic. Everybody say dynamic map. Yes. Yeah, so uh, what the ArcGIS online or the ArcGIS system is doing is we are doing a dynamic or a web map. 
So you can call it a web map. So it is not static because you can actually, you know, in your paper map, you will not be able to uh, zoom in, zoom out your, your maps, but with what with the hard guys uh, software, you can be able to zoom out. That is why it is called dynamic. It's not static. You can zoom in to a, to different extent. OK, so like I said, the RDI story map is used for creating content. It is used for telling stories uh, to communicate with the audience. It is used for providing uh, content and giving our audience communication. OK, so just like uh, you only do in your English essay, if they tell you to write essay, before you write an essay, you have uh, taken your time to analyze what they're asking you to talk about. So you understand? When they say, uh, write an essay about your school, you not jump to the conclusion. You understand? You, you always have process and uh, you have stages that you that our teachers have they've taught, they've taught us to be able to actualize that. So sometimes you go from introduction to the body to the uh, what do you uh, uh, introduction body conclusion and all that you understand so likewise in that guy when you are telling stories you are supposed to also take your time and do some analysis number one you have a story in your head that you want to talk about you understand you have to understand that story that you want to talk about then from there you can now go and source for content you can start uh, All right, so you can be able to gather content, uh, then build narrative about, about it, then review your story before you publishing it. So the uh, Agile Story Map helps you to be able to tell your story and to publish it to the populace, to, 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 to others, so that they can see what you've done. So let me show you an example of our story maps that we have in our organization. So, so, with, I know you guys are familiar with uh, the those uh, uproar that we're having in the northern part of Nigeria, and that makes us to have IDPs, in, internal displaced persons. Okay, so you can see one of my colleagues here is trying to tell a story about locating internal displaced persons in a camp in Nigeria. So you can see you can see the picture of that place, of that place telling us about what IDPs are, who are those people that are living there, major causes of uh, displacement, uh, when we have com community clash, flood, insurgency, and who are those agencies that are responsible for uh, taking care of them and giving them uh, donations and all that. So we can see, we can see all those places. You can see the map of those IDPs here. And we can see stories, we can see content, we can see when this this picture is was taken when when uh, some of my colleagues went to to those IDPs to have an interaction with them. So just like you are seeing it from from here, also personally from your own end, you can also uh, create story map. Maybe you want to tell. Uh, we are all familiar with the flooding that happened recently. Maybe you guys want to tell a story about flooding you can also create your own story map using this, uh, the hard GI story map. So let me just give you a view about uh, another one. Another one is, uh, is about, about uh, Lassa fever in Nigeria. So Lassa fever in Nigeria. So this is, this is another one talking about Lassa fever, the, the heartbreak of Lassa fever in Nigeria. You can see we are trying to talk about the first case. How, how did it happen? Where did it happen from? What is Lassa fever? So with the RGI story map, you can be able to tell your story, organize it, and be able to share it. So the good thing about RGI story map is that you can share it. So if I, I can share you this link now, and probably your uncle 
we I'll, I'll, I'll paste this uh, link inside the chat. So your uncle will open the link and you guys can see it from your end so that it won't be as if we are showing you you, we are showing you something that uh, that is not possible. You understand? So I've shared the link with your uncle. Your uncle is going to you are going to view it from that from that side. So assuming now, let me just give you like a small uh, demonstration of how to create a story map because uh, I think we are going to give. Uh, so you want to go for break for five minutes. Five minutes, are you sure? Or we should just end it before they go, please. Okay, so, all right. So let me just show you a way of creating story maps so that you guys from your hand, do you guys have a computer in your school? All right, so this is how to create story map. Once you have launched your guys online, go to your app launcher and go to story map. So we want to start a story map now. So we will just want to do something that involves your school. Is this your school, please? Is this your school? Is this your school, Abby? Is this your school? Yes. All right. So let me just create something about your school. I want to tell a small story about your school. So maybe when we finish this, and uh, your uncle will help you out so that you can create story map about uh, maybe flooding in Nigeria. You want to create story map about uh, a banditry uh, in Nigeria. We want to talk about security insurgency in, in Nigeria and so on. So from your own end, after this, you'll be able to create uh, different kinds of story map. And we'll be happy that, we'll be very, very happy to see your story map and share with us, okay? So now we have created one. I can I can just give the title as, uh, what's the name of your school? Okay, La. So let's okay. Let's just tell story about Abolari College. So yeah, we want to talk about Abolari Abolari College. Okay, la right. So I'm aware that that your school is where you pay free school fees, right? Right. What did you say? They pay. They don't pay. They don't pay school fees in that school, right? Yes, yeah, a charity school. Okay, charity. So, a uh, uh, college. Okay, like I cannot say a school for all. A school for all. So, I'm trying to create a story, something that is interesting. You understand? So, this a college, a school for all. Then I can add imagery. Let me add imagery. Hello, guys. Okay, so I can hard imagery. Let me add it while talking. So this is, let me see this. Okay, so I can add it as my about talking. Or let me, let, let me find another one. Something that is more clear. No. Uh, So let let me use something like this. So this is my cover photo for you, Okila. So Abolari College, Okila, a school for all. 
for all. All right. So now I can say about 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 Ukela College. Sorry, about Abolaring Abolaring College. So I drafted something the other time about your school. So I can just say. I can just say this is about your school. I can paste. Then come here. I say uh, another thing is what we do. So I'm just trying to create a story about your school. Hmm. And paste this. Okay, so remember that my colleague shared a map the other time. So I want to use, I'm going to use that map here now. I'm going to use that map here. So I'll actually change this about this. I can make it, I can make it like I'm adding. Okay, or a sub adding. Something like a sub heading. So this what we do can make it a sub heading also and stuff like that. So I can actually add a map. So only me did you share that map? Okay. So my colleague shared a map the other time. I can go to my organization and you can see Okila. My colleague shared Okila the other time. So with Agile system, you can even be able to collaborate. Remember that I was not the one that did this. It was my colleague that did that. So I want to make use of that map. So with, with, with GIS, you can collaborate, you can share things with others and so on. Okay, so I have something like this. I can share this map. I can say this is Bolari College. Okay, so this is just a little bit. I'm just showing you how we can do this. And you can also preview. You can preview your, your work, preview your story so that you can be able to see how it will look like. So this is how it's going to look like. I can preview on how it's going to look on phone. So this is how it's going to look on phone in case you send it to somebody. Okay, so I can also change some functionalities there. I can change how it will I can change the design. I can change the design. Change. Uh, look at something like this. I've changed the color now. This is the way it looks like. OK, so I can also change to something like this again. OK, so I'm going to leave it like this. OK. So this is just like an example of what uh, ArcGIS Story Map can help us to do. You understand? This is how ArcGIS can, uh, Story Map can help us to tell stories. And I can also, I can uh, publish this and make it for everybody. I'm going to send a link to you so that you can, guys can have 
uh, a view of it. I'm, we are, I'm only trying to make this because uh, the time is far spent, so I don't want to waste our time. I'm going to share this link and your uncle will display it from your own end there. Okay, so this, uh, this story has been published now, so we have something like this. We have something like this. Are you guys with me? Thank you. All right. So thank you all. So while we wait for our guys to come back. <laughs>